The BBC World Service is an international broadcaster owned and operated by the BBC, with funding from the British government through the Foreign Secretary's Office. It is the world's largest external broadcaster in terms of reception area, language selection, and audience reach. It broadcasts radio news, speech, and discussions in more than 40 languages to many parts of the world on analog and digital shortwave platforms, internet streaming, podcasting, satellite, DAB, FM and MW relays. In 2015, the World Service reached an average of 210 million people a week. In November 2016, the BBC announced that it would start broadcasting in additional languages including Amharic and Igbo, in its biggest expansion since the 1940s. The World Service is funded by the United Kingdom's television license fee, limited advertising, and the profits of BBC Studios. The service was also guaranteed £289 million from the UK government. The World Service was funded for decades by grant in aid through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office until April 1, 2014. BBC World Service English maintains eight regional feeds with several programme variations, covering, respectively, East and South Africa, West and Central Africa, Europe and Middle East, the Americas and Caribbean. East Asia, South Asia, Australasia, and the United Kingdom. There are also two separate online-only streams with one being more news-oriented, known as News Internet. The service broadcasts 24 hours a day. The World Service claims that its aim is to be the world's best-known and most respected voice in international broadcasting, while retaining a balanced British view of international developments. Former director Peter Horrocks visualized the organization as fighting an information war of soft power against Russian and Chinese international state media, including RT. As such, the BBC has been banned in both Russia and China, the former following its 2022 invasion of Ukraine and the latter for having violated regulations that news bulletins should be truthful and fair. The director of the BBC World Service is Lillianne Landor. The controller of the BBC World Service in English is John Zilka. History The BBC World Service began on December 19, 1932 as the BBC Empire Service, broadcasting on shortwave and aimed principally at English speakers across the British Empire. In his first Christmas message, King George V characterised the service as intended for men and women so cut off by the snow, the desert, or the sea, that only voices out of the air can reach them. First hopes for the Empire Service were low. The Director General, Sir John Reith, said in the opening program, Don't expect too much in the early days, for some time we shall transmit comparatively simple programs, to give the best chance of intelligible reception and provide evidence as to the type of material most suitable for the service in each zone. The programs will neither be very interesting nor very good. This address was read out five times as the BBC broadcast it live to different parts of the world. On January 3, 1938 the first foreign language service was launched in Arabic. Programs in German, Italian, and French started on September 27, 1938, and by the end of 1942, the BBC had started broadcasts in all major European languages. As a result, the Empire Service was renamed the BBC Overseas Service in November 1939, supplemented by the addition of a dedicated BBC European Service from 1941. Funding for these services known administratively as the external services of the BBC came not from the domestic license fee but from government grant in aid. The external services broadcast propaganda during the Second World War of 1939-1945. Its French service Radio Londres also sent coded messages to the French resistance. George Orwell broadcast many news bulletins on the Eastern Service during the Second World War. By the end of the 1940s, the number of broadcast languages had expanded and reception had improved, following the opening of a relay in Malaya and of the Limassol relay in Cyprus in 1957. 
On May 1, 1965 the service took its current name of BBC World Service. It expanded its reach with the opening of the Ascension Island Relay in 1966, serving African audiences with a stronger signal and better reception, and with the later relay on the island of Masira in Oman. In August 1985 the service went off-air for the first time when workers went on strike in protest at the British government's decision to ban a documentary featuring an interview with Martin McGuinness of Sinn Féin. Subsequently, financial pressures decreased the number and the types of services offered by the BBC. Audiences in countries with wide access to Internet services have less need for terrestrial radio. Broadcasts in German ended in March 1999 after research showed that the majority of German listeners tuned into the English language service. Broadcasts in Dutch, Finnish, French, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese and Malay stopped for similar reasons. On October 25, 2005, the BBC announced that broadcasts in Bulgarian, Croatian, Czech, Greek, Hungarian, Kazakh, Polish, Slovak, Slovene and Thai would end by March 2006, to finance the launch in 2007 of television news services in Arabic and Persian. Additionally, Romanian broadcasts ceased on August 1, 2008. In 2011, BBC Kyrgyz service newsreader and producer Arslan Koichiv resigned from his BBC post after revelations and claims of involvement in the Kyrgyzstan Revolution of April 2010. He had been based in London, but often travelled to Kyrgyzstan and used BBC resources to agitate against President Kermanbek Bekiyev, appearing on a Kyrgyz radio station under a pseudonym with a disguised voice. One of the leaders of the revolution, Ali Isbek Alimkulov, named the producer as his mentor and claimed that they had discussed preparations for the revolution. According to London newspaper The Evening Standard, Mr Alimkulov claimed that Koichiv arranged secret meetings through the BBC and organised the march at the Presidential Palace on April 7, 2010 In January 2011, the closure of the Albanian, Macedonian and Serbian as well English for the Caribbean and Portuguese for Africa, services was announced. The British government announced that the three Balkan countries had wide access to international information, and so broadcasts in the local languages had become unnecessary. This decision reflected the financial situation the corporation faced following transfer of responsibility for the service from the Foreign Office, so that it would in future have been funded from within license fee income. The Russian, Ukrainian, Mandarin Chinese, Turkish, Vietnamese and Spanish for Cuba services ceased radio broadcasting, and the Hindi, Indonesian, Kyrgyz, Nepali, Swahili, Kinyarwanda and Kyrandi services ceased shortwave transmissions. As part of the 16% budget cut, 650 jobs were eliminated. Operation the service broadcasts from Broadcasting House in London, which is also headquarters of the corporation. It is located in the newer parts of the building, which contains radio and television studios for use by the overseas language services. The building also contains an integrated newsroom used by the International World Service, the international television channel BBC World News, the domestic television and radio BBC News Bulletins the BBC News Channel and BBC Online. At its launch, the service was located along with most radio output in Broadcasting House. However, following the explosion of a parachute mine nearby on December 8, 1940, it relocated to premises away from the likely target of Broadcasting House. The overseas service relocated to Oxford Street while the European service moved temporarily to the emergency broadcasting facilities at Maida Vale Studios. The European services moved permanently into Bush House towards the end of 1940, completing the move in 1941, with the overseas services joining them in 1958. Bush House subsequently became the home of the BBC World Service and the building itself has gained a global reputation with the audience of the service. 
However, the building was vacated in 2012 as a result of the Broadcasting House redevelopment and the end of the building's lease that year. The first service to move was the Burmese service on March 11, 2012 and the final broadcast from Bush House was a news bulletin broadcast at 11.00 GMT on July 12, 2012. The BBC World Service encompasses an English 24-hour global radio network and separate services in 27 other languages. News and information is available in these languages on the BBC website with many having RSS feeds and specific versions for use on mobile devices, and some also offer email notification of stories. In addition to the English service, 18 of the language services broadcast a radio service using the short wave, AM or FM bands. These are also available to listen live or can be listened to later over the Internet and, in the case of seven language services, can be downloaded as podcasts. News is also available from the BBC News app, which is available from both iTunes and the Google Play Store. In recent years, video content has also been used by the World Service, 16 language services show video reports on the website, and the Arabic and Persian services have their own television channels. TV is also used to broadcast the radio service with local cable and satellite operators providing the English network free to air. The English service is also available on digital radio in the UK and Europe. Traditionally, the service relied on shortwave broadcasts, because of their ability to overcome barriers of censorship, distance and spectrum scarcity. The BBC has maintained a worldwide network of shortwave relay stations since the 1940s, mainly in former British colonies. These cross-border broadcasts have also been used in special circumstances for emergency messages to British subjects abroad, such as the advice to evacuate Jordan during the Black September incidents of September 1970. These facilities were privatised in 1997 as Merlin Communications, and later acquired and operated as part of a wider network for multiple broadcasters by VT Communications. It is also common for BBC programs to air on Voice of America or ORF transmitters, while their programming is relayed by a station located inside the UK. However, since the 1980s, satellite distribution has made it possible for local stations to relay BBC programs. Languages This table lists the various language services operated by the BBC World Service with start and closure dates where known slash applicable. Radio programming in English The World Service in English mainly broadcasts news and analysis. The mainstays of the current schedule are Newsday, NewsHour, and the Newsroom. There are daily science programs, Health Check, the technology program Digital Planet and Science in Action. At weekends, some of the schedule is taken up by Sports World which often includes live commentary of Premier League football matches. Other weekend sports shows include The Sports Hour and Stumped, a cricket program CO produced with All India Radio and the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. On Sundays the international, interdisciplinary discussion program The Forum is broadcast. Outlook is a human interest program presented by Matthew Bannister and Joe Fidgen which was first broadcast in July 1966 and presented for more than 30 years by John Tidmarsh. Trending describes itself as explaining the stories the world is sharing. Regular music programs were reintroduced with the autumn schedule in 2015. Many programs, particularly speech-based ones, are also available as podcasts. Business Daily is a weekday live international business news program, which broadcasts from 8.32 and 30 seconds a.m. to 8.59 and 0 seconds a.m. UK time from Broadcasting House in London. Previous radio programming in English Previous broadcasts included popular music programs presented by John Peel and classical music programs presented by Edward Greenfield. There have also been religious programs 
of mostly Anglican celebration and often from the Church of St. Martin in the Fields, weekly drama, English language lessons, and comedy including Just a Minute. Other notable previous programs include Letter from America by Alastair Cook, which was broadcast for over 50 years, off the shelf with its daily reading from a novel, biography, or history book, A Jolly Good Show, a music request program presented by Dave Lee Travis, Waveguide, a radio reception guide, and the Merchant Navy program, a show for seafarers presented by Malcolm Billings, The Morning Show. Good Morning Africa and PM, all presented by Pete Myers in the 1960s and 1970s. Since the late 1990s, the station has focused more on news, with bulletins added every half hour following the outbreak of the Iraq War. News News is at the core of the scheduling. A five-minute bulletin is generally transmitted at 01 past the hour, with a two-minute summary at 30 past the hour. Sometimes these are separate from other programming, or alternatively made integral to the program. During such time slots as weeknights 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. GMT and that of Sports World, no news summaries are broadcast. As part of the BBC's policy for breaking news, the service is the first to receive a full report for foreign news. Availability Americas BBC World Service is available by subscription to Sirius XM satellite radio service in the United States. Its Canadian affiliate, Sirius XM Canada, does the same in Canada. More than 300 public radio stations across the U.S. carry World Service news broadcasts mostly during the overnight and early morning hours over AM and FM radio, distributed by American Public Media. Some public radio stations also carry the world service in its entirely via HD radio. The BBC and Public Radio International CO produce the program The World with WGBH Radio Boston, and the BBC was previously involved with the Takeaway Morning News program based at WNYC in New York City. BBC World Service programming also airs as part of CBC Radio 1 CBC Radio Overnight Schedule in Canada. BBC shortwave broadcasts to this region were traditionally enhanced by the Atlantic Relay Station and the Caribbean Relay Company, a station in Antigua run jointly with Deutsche Well. In addition, an exchange agreement with Radio Canada International gave access to their station in New Brunswick. However, Changing listening habits led the World Service to end shortwave radio transmission directed to North America and Australasia on July 1, 2001. A shortwave listener coalition formed to oppose the change. The BBC broadcasts to Central America and South America in several languages. It is possible to receive the Western African shortwave radio broadcasts from Eastern North America but the BBC does not guarantee reception in this area. It has ended its specialist programming to the Falkland Islands but continues to provide a stream of world service programming to the Falkland Islands radio service. Asia For several decades, the world service's largest audiences have been in Asia, the Middle East, Near East, and South Asia. Transmission facilities in the UK and Cyprus were supplemented by the former BBC Eastern Relay Station in Oman and the Far Eastern Relay Station in Singapore, formerly in Malaysia. The East Asian Relay Station moved to Thailand in 1997 when Hong Kong was handed over to Chinese sovereignty. The relay station in Thailand was closed in January 2017, currently, Relay stations in Singapore and Oman serve the Asian region. Together, these facilities have given the BBC World Service an easily accessible signal in regions where shortwave listening has traditionally been popular. The English shortwave frequencies of 6.195, were widely known. On March 25, 2018, the long-established shortwave frequency of 9.74 MHz was changed to 9.9 MHz. The largest audiences are in English, 
Hindi, Urdu, Nepali, Bengali, Sinhala, Tamil, Marathi and other major languages of South Asia, where BBC broadcasters are household names. The Persian service is the de facto national broadcaster of Afghanistan, along with its Iranian audience. The world service is available up to 18 hours a day in English across most parts of Asia, and in Arabic for the Middle East. With the addition of relays in Afghanistan and Iraq these services are accessible in most of the Middle and Near East in the evening. In Singapore, the BBC World Service in English is essentially treated as a domestic broadcaster, easily available 24 7 through long-term agreement with Media Corp Radio. For many years Radio Television Hong Kong broadcast BBC World Service 24 7 but as of February 12, 2021, Hong Kong has banned the BBC's World Service Radio from its airwaves, following swiftly on the heels of China's decision to bar its world news television channels, seemingly in retaliation for Ofcom revoking the UK broadcasting license of China Global Television Network. In the Philippines, DZRJ 810AM broadcasts the BBC World Service in English from 12.0005.00 PHT. Although this region has seen the launch of the only two foreign language television channels, several other services have had their radio services closed as a result of budget cuts and redirection of resources. Japan and Korea have little tradition of world service listening, although during the 1970s to 1980s, shortwave listening was popular in Japan. In those two countries, the BBC World Service was only available via shortwave and the Internet. As of September 2007, a satellite transmission became available by Sky Life in South Korea. In November 2016, the BBC World Service announced it plans to start broadcasts in Korean. BBC Korean, a radio and web service, started on September 25, 2017. Jamming Europe the BBC World Service is broadcast in Berlin on 94.8 MHz FM relays are also available in Sesk but Jovis, Karlovy Vary, Plzen, Usti Nadlabem, Zlin and Prague in the Czech Republic, Pristina, Riga, Tallinn, Tirana and Vilnius. A BBC World Service channel is available on DAB and in Brussels and Flanders and Amsterdam, The Hague, Utrecht and Rotterdam. Following a national reorganization of DAB multiplexes in October 2017, the station is available on DAB and across the whole of Denmark. The World Service employed a medium wave transmitter at Orford Ness to provide English language coverage to Europe, including on the frequency 648 kHz. Transmissions on this frequency were stopped on March 27, 2011 as a consequence of the budgetary constraints imposed on the BBC World Service in the 2010 Budget Review. A second channel traditionally broadcast in various Central European languages, but this frequency has also been discontinued and in 2005 it began regular English language transmissions via the digital Radio Mondiale format. This is a digital shortwave technology that VT expects to become the standard for cross-border transmissions in developed countries. In the 1990s, the BBC purchased and constructed large medium-wave and FM networks in the former Soviet bloc, particularly the Czech, Slovak republics, Poland and Russia. It had built up a strong audience during the Cold War whilst economic restructuring made it difficult for these governments to refuse Western investment. Many of these facilities have now returned to domestic control, as economic and political conditions have changed. On Monday, February 18, 2008, the BBC World Service stopped analog shortwave transmissions to Europe. The notice stated, Increasing numbers of people around the world are choosing to listen to radio on a range of other platforms including FM, satellite and online, with fewer listening on shortwave. It is sometimes possible to pick up the BBC World Service in Europe on SW frequencies targeted at North Africa. 
the BBC's powerful 198 kHz LW, which broadcasts the domestic BBC Radio 4 to Britain during the day can also be heard in nearby parts of Europe, including the Republic of Ireland, the Netherlands, Belgium and parts of France, Germany and Scandinavia. In Malta, BBC news bulletins are carried by a number of radio stations, including Radio Malta and Magic 91.7, owned by national broadcaster PBS LTD. These are broadcast at various points in the day and supplement news bulletins broadcast in Maltese from the PBS newsroom. Former BBC shortwave transmitters are located in the United Kingdom at Ramp Esham Down in Dorset, Wolferton in Shropshire and Skelton in Cumbria. The former BBC East Mediterranean relay station is in Cyprus. In response to the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, the BBC began broadcasting World Service English programming at shortwave frequencies 15.735 MHz and 5,875 kHz for receivers in Ukraine and parts of Russia. Pacific The World Service is available as part of the subscription digital air package in Australia. ABC News Radio, SBS Radio, and various community radio stations also broadcast many programs. Many of these stations broadcast a straight feed during the midnight to dawn period. It is also available via the satellite service Optus Aurora, which is encrypted but available without subscription. In Sydney, Australia a transmission of the service can be received at 152.025 MHz. It is also available on the DAB and network in Australia on SBS Radio 4. 2 MB's FM 102.5, a classical music station in Sydney, also carries the BBC World Service news programs at 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. on weekdays, during its Music for a New Day Breakfast program. Shortwave relays from Singapore continue, but historic relays via Australian Broadcasting Corporation and Radio New Zealand International were wound down in the late 1990s. BBC World Service relays on Radio Australia now carry the BBC Radio News programmes. In the Pacific and New Zealand, the Auckland Radio Trust operates a BBC World Service network as a non-profit donation-funded public broadcaster. It broadcasts on 810 kHz in Auckland, 107.0 MHz in Waishanga and Huangamat, 107.3 MHz in Kaipara Harbour, 88.2 MHz in Suva and Nadi, 100.0 MHz in Bairiki and Tarawa, 101.1 MHz in Pohnpei, 107.6 MHz in Port Moresby, 105.9 MHz in Honiara, 99.0 MHz in Port Vila and Luganville, and 100.1 MHz in Funafuti. The station also broadcasts local content. In New Zealand, AREC FM carries the BBC World Service 24 sevenths in the Wellington region. Available on 107.0 MHz in the CBD, 87.6 MHz in Porirua slash Mana, and 87.9 MHz in Wakani slash Paraparamu. AREC FM is a non-profit donation-funded LPFM broadcaster and a subscriber to the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia's Community Radio Network. In New Zealand, Radio Tirana and members of the Association of Community Access Broadcasters carry some BBC World Service programs. The BBC World Service was previously available on 1,233 kHz in Wellington between 1990 and 1994, and again from 1996 to 1997. UK The BBC World Service is broadcast on DAB, Freeview, Virgin Media, and Sky platforms. It is also broadcast overnight on the frequencies of BBC Radio 4 and the Welsh language service BBC Radio Simru following their close down at 0000 or 0100 British time. The BBC World Service does not receive funding for broadcasts to the UK. In South East England, 
the station could be picked up reliably on medium wave 648 kHz, which was targeted at mainland Europe. The medium wave service was closed in 2011 as a cost cutting measure. According to Rajar, the station broadcasts to a weekly audience of 1.2 million with a listening share of 0.6% as of September 2022. Presentation Opening Tune The World Service uses several tunes and sounds to represent the station. A previous signature tune of the station was a five note motif composed by David Arnold and which comprises a variety of voices to claim this is the BBC in. Before going on to name various cities, followed by the station's slogan and the Greenwich Time signal. This was heard throughout the network with a few variations in the UK the full service name was spoken, whereas just the name of the BBC was used outside the UK. The phrase This is London was used previously in place of a station slogan. The tune Lillibulero was another well-known signature tune of the network following its broadcast previously as part of the top of the hour sequence. This piece of music is no longer heard before news bulletins. The use of the tune gained minor controversy because of its background as a Protestant marching song in Northern Ireland. The Prince of Denmark's march was often broadcast by the BBC radio during World War II especially when programming was directed to occupied Denmark, as the march symbolized a connection between the two countries. It remained for many years the signature tune of the BBC European Service. In addition to these tunes, the BBC World Service also uses several interval signals. The English service uses a recording of Bow Bells, made in 1926 and used a symbol of hope during the Second World War only replaced for a brief time during the 1970s with the tune to the nursery rhyme Oranges and Lemons. The Morse code of the letter V has also been used as a signal and was introduced in January 1941 and had several variations including timpani, the first four notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and electronic tones which until recently remained in use for some Western European services. In other languages, the interval signal is three notes, pitched BBC. However, these symbols have been used less frequently. Time The network operates using Greenwich Mean Time, regardless of the time zone and time of year, and is announced on the hour on the English service as 13 hours GMT or midnight Greenwich Mean Time. The BBC World Service traditionally broadcasts the chimes of Big Ben in London at the start of a new year. This is London. A BBC News report would begin with its station identification phrase This is London or This is London Calling. The phrase has become a trademark of the BBC World Service, and has been influential in popular culture, such as music. In 1979, the British punk rock band The Clash released the hit song London Calling, which was partly based on the station identification phrase. On the Eurovision Song Contest, before announcing the contest results for the UK, the broadcaster from the BBC delivering the votes usually begins with This is London Calling. In 2019, the BBC started a weekly podcast called Eurovision Calling with Jade Adams and Scott Mills. Magazine Publishing The BBC World Service previously published magazines and programme guides. London Calling, Listings BBC Worldwide, included features of interest to an international audience. BBC On Air, mainly listings. BBC Focus on Africa, current affairs. Assessments. British Soft Power. The World Service claims that its aim is to be the world's best known and most respected voice in international broadcasting thereby bringing benefit to the UK, the BBC, and to audiences around the world, while retaining a balanced British view of international developments. According to the American Socialist magazine Monthly Review, former director Peter Horrocks inferred the World Service's scope to Russian state broadcaster RT as a means of extending international influence and soft power with Tory MP John Whittingdale characterizing the BBC's primary mission as fighting an information war, 
saying, We are being outgunned massively by the Russians and Chinese and that's something I've raised with the BBC. It is frightening the extent to which we are losing the information war.